Hey everybody, it's Friday Farm Vlog, and I'm so excited to tell you we had a surprise on the farm this Tuesday. My kids and I came outside, and Clypey and Kaden were like, oh my goodness, mom, come here, you gotta see this. And my two dogs were going crazy, and I'm like, what are they chasing? And I get over to the goat pen, and there were little tiny baby buff Warpington chicks running around, and I'm like, where did they come from? <laughs> Is that from the goat pen or is that from the chicken coop? She's the goat pen! She's teaching them. They're so cute. So our hen that has been sitting on hatching eggs in the goat buck pen actually hatched out her chicks and she had seven baby chicks following her around in the goat pen and they had slipped out into the main backyard and that's where the dogs were trying to check out the chicks and we panicked because we didn't want them to accidentally step on the chicks. It <laughs> But what an awesome surprise. The most we've ever had for chicks hatching under a broody hen here is four chicks. So to have seven is amazing. <laughs> now it isn't safe for her to raise her chicks in the goat pen because I don't have a way to secure her and keep those chicks safe from predators and potentially from the goats accidentally stepping on the chicks. I don't have any problems with my goats with the chickens, but they could accidentally step on a chick and hurt them. And certainly predators, we wanna keep these chicks as safe as possible. So we moved them to the chicken coop and set them up in their own little brooder. You wanna go check them out? They are so cute. Oh my gosh, and so tiny. And she is like such a good mom, very protective of them. When I had to catch the mama chicken and her seven babies, I had to put a pet carrier down and I tried to get her and the babies into the corner of the fence line. I tried to put mama in there hoping the chicks would follow her, but she just came running back out in a panic for her babies. She didn't want to be separated, which I can totally understand. So then I took four of her babies and I put them in there and she quickly ran in with them. And then I was able to scoop two more and put them in the pet carrier, but one chicky baby ran under the fence and into the wooded area that's on the side of the perimeter fence. And I was so scared that chick was gonna get lost in the woods. But thankfully, Mama Hen just yelled for the chick and it popped its little head back under the fence and I went to go scoop them up, but the chick ran. But thankfully, my St. Bernard, Anna, was at the ready and she just stood patiently waiting. He saw her, looked up and was like, uh-oh, turned around and ran right to me. So I scooped the baby up and put it with Mama Hen. So I was able to pick up the pet carrier with them all in there and get them situated in the brooder. <laughs> but let's go see them. I did clean out the chicken coop and I put the compost into this raised bed here. So the chickens have been going nuts just digging through everything. I think they'll make quick work of this winter bedding and turn it into compost. So I have her set up behind this chicken wire area and she is actually underneath the nesting boxes where our broody hen is so she's got the chick feed in this feeder she's got water here that's accessible for her and the babies they also have a second smaller waterer back here inside of the pet carrier i left the pet carrier in there so if she wanted to feel secure underneath to sleep inside of there but she actually slept last night in the back corner with her babies all nestled under her all the babies are actually currently under her she's keeping them warm but I'll show you some videos of her and her little babies that I got over the last couple of days.
It's rainy in the upper 50s today, so she's definitely been keeping them warm and tucked under her, <laughs> except for when they come out to eat and drink. And then our second broody hen over here is sitting on her eggs. She's got quite a few eggs now. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. Hi. You want to say hello? It looks like she kicked out an egg, which I'm always amazed when broody hens kick out eggs. Every egg that's been kicked out of a broody hen's nest that I've checked has either been infertile or stopped developing. I don't know how they know, but it's impressive when they are able to tell that that egg is not gonna hatch. <laughs> or when they abandon a nest after hatching chicks and they just know the other ones aren't going to hatch. I don't know, they're just impressive to me how they just, they just know. <laughs> now in the other nesting box, we do have some eggs in there, four eggs. So our other non-broody hens have been busy. So since the broody mama and her chicks were gonna be moving in here to get them safely out of the goat pen, I did a full spring cleaning of this coop and put down some diatomaceous earth, which helps to get rid of lice, mites, fleas, just as a natural protectant to put down. So I did sprinkle that down, I put some horse pellet bedding down, which I added hot water to, to help the pellets absorb the water and puff up to make it spread further. After that, I just ended up putting down some hay, which feels a little nicer for their feet than the pellets that haven't actually absorbed the water. The pellets that do absorb the water is nice, soft, like sawdust, but there's still quite a few pellets that are hard. So their substrate's a bit mixed right now, but want it to be nice and fresh for our baby chickies, our birdie mama, and the rest of the flock. I went to go clean out the chick coop next for the spring cleaning of the chick coop because I wanted to move my three brooders of chicks from the house out to the chick coop and I found another nest. So not just the original nest that was in there that I wasn't sure how old the eggs were, but now there's a second nest and there was a hen sitting on it, but she hadn't been on there the night before because I count all my chickens every night and she was in the main coop. So that chicken, I wasn't sure if she was just laying an egg or if she was going broody. She didn't want me taking the eggs, so I thought maybe she was starting to go broody, but I needed the chick coop. I couldn't leave her in there with all the chicks moving in and I had to get it all cleaned out and fresh bedding. So I moved her in the little goat house that this broody mama had laid her eggs in originally. I cleaned it all out. I put the new eggs in there with some hay and I moved the mama there. She didn't stay on the nest, so it turns out she probably wasn't broody, but I'm leaving it in the main chicken coop. Maybe these eggs won't go to waste. Maybe someone will sit on them. So that's right down here. I did put this in front of it to block the dogs from getting to the eggs. I try my best not to let the dogs follow me in, but if they do, this will slow them down. <laughs> my St. Bernard, Anna, does like to check on all the chicks. She's very concerned about the chicks, so I caught her trying to peek in, checking on these chicks. She's just a big mama hen. But let me show you how big the chicks are getting that I had in my house. <laughs> Some more water. So here are the chicks. So I have them separated by this kennel. The larger standard buff Orpingtons have the run of the place and the bantam buff Orpingtons are in this kennel here. So they have separate heat lamps and separate heating pads and they are really loving having the extra space in here. I actually just went to Tractor Supply and got a bigger waterer for the standard buff Orpingtons because they go through water several times a day. So <laughs> there's more of them and they're bigger. So I'm gonna upgrade to a larger size for them out here. And I just set them up with these larger feeders. All these chickies go through a lot of food. You checking in, Anna? You checking in? Yeah. So they had their first night last night out here. The coop got to about 60 degrees for the outer temperature, but underneath the heat lamps stayed a cozy 95 degrees. And I found most of them slept kind of on the outskirts of the heat 
but they like to lay on the heating pads. <laughs> so they definitely had some heat options there. <laughs> now that they're bigger, I am gonna try a brooder plate with them and just see how that goes. <laughs> I am noticing some redness in the comb of our standard buff warping tins. And so that's indicative of roosters. So we're already starting to see some gender differences and that will help us with selling the standard buff warping tins as pullets versus cockerels. Hello, so here's our standard buff warping tins and here are our bantam buff warping tins. The buff brahmas along with the other Buff Orpington Bantams are still in my basement. We put little colored elastics on our other flock of Buff Orpington Bantams from Valley Hatchery. So that way we can differentiate between the two different hatchery chicks for determining our breeding flock in the future. But they are gonna go in with these Bantams. Once I'm sure that those elastics are not coming off, I want them to on for a full 24 hours. And as long as they don't fall off, they'll get to move in here tomorrow. But I'm happy to see that everybody's doing pretty good. But can you see the comb development on this one with the redness there? That is a rooster right there. Woo! And another rooster right here. Oh, you're knocking your food over. It would be great if we mostly have pullets over here. Pullets are in high demand. Roosters, not so much. But yeah, so they've got the heat, the heat lamp here to sleep under. They have a heating pad, the white right there, to lay on top of. And then over here, they have their little heat heating pad cave that they can go in or go on top of. They've knocked all the hay off the top of it. And they also have their heat lamp here. They have a big feeder and a small waterer. They do okay with a small waterer with me filling it up twice a day. So, oh, you're climbing. <laughs> you guys are getting wild, huh? They are loving the extra space. So I just keep a little brooder thermometer here. It's saying it's currently at 64 ambient temperature which air moving around the coop about all about not directly under the heat lamp for the majority of them so that tells me they're pretty comfortable right now but i'm going to close this up try to keep some of that heat in i do put the carabiner on here try to keep any predators from undoing the latch. And then as far as our incubators, we still have the three incubators running. We have five days left to find out of the three incubation style challenge, which one is gonna win. Will it be the dry hatch method, the shoelace method, or standard incubation? So I did candle them, and of the first incubator, there are 17 eggs that have developing embryos. With the dry hatch method, there are 13 eggs with embryos. And with the shoelace method, there are 21 embryos developing in those eggs. So you might think that the shoelace method is winning right now. However, you have to take into account how many eggs were infertile in each and subtract that from your hatching percentage <laughs> from your hatch rate. Cause we're going to be looking at hatch rate of the fertile eggs, which ones hatch the most. So I did find six infertile eggs in the standard hatching incubation method and 10 infertile eggs in the dry hatch method. So that's why they have lower embryonic development counts. <laughs> so we'll see once they're all hatched, which incubation method is the winner. <laughs> but let's go jump in and see our pregnant does and see how they are doing. <laughs> we got Fancy Nancy laying in the hay, chewing her cud. And let's see. My girl, Miss Amelia, and Miss Elizabeth is laying on the milk stand. Hi, girls. Hello.
<laughs> so my girls are continuing to do well and progressing in their pregnancies. Hi. Hello. Yeah, hi. Miss Fancy Nancy, she only has 14 days left until her expected due date. So she's outside in the hay, but her udder actually grew. And so that is a sign you look for to see that they're getting closer. I mean, technically their udder can fill up right before they go into labor, but sometimes they can fill up a month ahead of time. So it's not necessarily an indicator of impending labor, but it just is one more step to look for to know that, hey, these babies are coming. <laughs> How are you feeling, Miss Nancy? She just came in. I want to see if she'll let me get a little measurement of her. And just see where we're at. <laughs> what about Amelia? Can I measure you? What do you think? Forty-nine, Miss Amelia. Look at you. Her belly is popping today. Ooh, the room is popping out too. My goodness, 49. Now Miss Nancy. Can I get you some snacks? gain for Miss Fancy Nancy and she still has two weeks to go. Oh my goodness, those babies are growing. <laughs> and then a three inch increase with Miss Amelia Bedelia. Either she ate a ton of hay or these babies are really growing in there and she's got a ways to go. Ooh. Miss Amelia still has I think about 47 days left to go so she's got a while. You gotta be a big girl by the time these babies are coming out, huh? What do you think? Miss Elizabeth is shedding quite a bit. We had some beautiful weather this week, especially yesterday and the day before. 60 degree weather it was really nice for April. <laughs> you pretty girl. Hi. <laughs> so thank you for hanging out with us today definitely check back for this Sunday soaping Sunday I just made some dinosaur soap so you can see that on Sunday and then next Friday we'll see how big the chicks are getting and how big our pregnant does are getting <laughs> and maybe our other broody hen will have some surprise chicks for us by then so if you haven't started your farm yet what are you waiting for get your farm on and if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. It really helps our channel out. Thanks. One, two, one, two, three, four. Do you want a farm? A wicked awesome farm. Watch this channel to learn what to do. We love to farm and we'll show you.